Welcome back, guys. Time to pick back up on part two of the AMA with Travis Matthew Bell. Yeah, and see, we call each other our middle names. Uh, Roberts is terrific, and we'll just leave that at that. Um, but uh, we we knew this was going to take a little while, and we don't want you guys to be like, oh, there's those two talking heads again on YouTube. Uh, and we're telling a lot of car stories inside this and a lot of stuff about, heck, he just... I just found out he wrecked a record down in an icy road, but it didn't hit a thing. So technically it didn't count. Yep, no insurance claim, no wreck. Uh, out of all the cars from Nate, uh, Pitch Ford, out of all the cars you've played with over the years, uh, what cars that consistently got your most attention? So what's what's the cars that consistently get your most attention? Um, <sighs> And I mean, we know right out of the gate that Robert loves him some Corvettes. Uh, there I, may be one right off his shoulder, but is there anything that consistently grabs you? Like, damn it, man. I love GM muscle cars. Chevelles, like I said, Corvettes, but probably Chevelles. Love GTOs, especially early GTOs, 64, 65 GTOs. I'm just a muscle car guy. Yeah. But, you know, and this is my thing. I love them all. And I say this all the time. Like, I really do. My heart's in muscle cars. I love them. But... Like, as I look over, my 56 Chevrolet sitting sure, off camera. Sure. You know, I love a Tri-5 Chevy. You know, there's just memories that draw you to these cars. And just things you just, you like them. You know, my grandfather's first drag car was a 56 Chevrolet. So, naturally, that's my favorite of the Tri-5s. And it's just different things. 70 Chevelle. Who the hell doesn't like a 70 Chevelle? I mean, it just works. Corvette. America's real sports car. Just saying. Okay. So, but... For my follow-up on that, too, just uh, not Nate's follow-up, um, there are muscle car guys, but there are hot rod guys. So, and, and sometimes the muscle car guy and you looks at a T-bucket Ford and be like, mm. or he, I, knew, I know how much money that man has in that and it's a good attempt, or that one's pretty slicked out. Are you completely no hot rods all muscle cars or if the deal's right and the turn and burn or what where see then this is where i'm different because you have a lot of guys it's 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 what it's black or white you know what i mean this me is too. i'm other. like you can put me in the 70s chevelle but if you pull up in the in the grease light looking lightning looking car with the fenders tore off of it or the even the american graffiti uh milner coop milner coop the 32 coop mm -hmm. i'm not that guy See, I like that because it's iconic. Yeah. Um, I actually interviewed the body man that built all those cars. Gotcha. For it was it, on the radio. It was absolutely epic. His take on so hot rods versus. I like them both. I'm, I'm, it's not black and white with me because I, I really do. I love you know. I grew up in street rods, and and then you know that was the thing. I just had a buddy send me a text about a thirty-seven four two-door sedan street rod. I love them. Yeah, you know, they're not the best selling thing. They're not the most popular thing right now. So naturally, you know, obviously I buy what I sell. So muscle cars and 50s cars and 60s cars. You know, we had a beautiful 64 Cadillac here yesterday. We have so many cars like that that I'm into that I just like them all. I really do. And I can see the workmanship, the quality, sure. and the time that went into it, no matter what it is. So I can appreciate them all. But um, that, that being said, another funny about I'll say, I'll say American paper, Graffiti, man. though. Like I said, I was talking about Spotty Man. Go ahead. Two. So, you know, the 58 Chevrolet that Ray Everham ended up with, the yeah. tow drove yeah. that was Ron Howard's car. That's right. Do you know they bought that car? It was already done, but it was red with white scallops on it. And they bought it because it had that beautiful red, white, tuck and roll interior, and it was already ready to go. But they were they were scared that they already had the hero car done. Mm -hmm. They thought that car was cooler. So they sent it to the body shop to have it painted white so it wouldn't be as flashy. Did not take away from the Milner Coop. Um, another funny was the Merc that the Pharaohs drove. Mm -hmm. um, that car was an all original 50 Mercury. They chopped the top on it for that movie. It had no windows in it. The side glasses, they were all out. Stop in this story to tell another one. If you have no idea what on God's Green Earth we're talking about, and there's another thing I say on Ben Wiki all the time God's Green Earth, trust me, I know. My old man used to say, hell's half acre. Like, I don't, I'm sick of dragging you all over hell's half acre. So we turned it into God's Green Earth. Robert is talking about American Graffiti, and it is a movie by George Lucas. If you have no idea what we're talking about, there's a phone in your pocket. Continue. 
but they built this car. Well, the movie takes place in 1962. Well, if you notice, that Mercury has a custom grill in the front of it. It's very cool. It's a very neat touch. You know, it's just like a chrome V mm -hmm. in the grill. He said, you know what that grill's made out of? He said, I said, what's that? He said, I made it. He said, keep in mind, movie cars typically have a, a very weak budget. Sure, and they don't last very long. So they had a wrecked 73 Camaro, or whatever they found, a 73 Camaro that was bent on the end. The bumper was. They cut the ends off of it and welded that bumper in, taped it off, painted the car, peeled it off as chrome in the center. And, and so that's what became uh, the Merc grill. Uh, the Merc grill. Yeah. But the thing that was funny is that's a bumper off a 73 Camaro on a 50 Merc that was supposed to be filmed in 1962. 62. Little fun tidbit. We've already learned a lot about Back to the Future today, just hanging out behind the scenes. Oh, so, Lord. Uh, yeah, we'll geek out on we'll that. We'll geek out. We're, we are pop culture city. Um, some things going back to the hot rods and the black and white. And I, and I, and I confess, I am one of those guys. I mean, you know, I had a multiple 1968, 69, 70 Dodge Chargers. There's something problem with problem with me. I was a Mopar guy for a long, long time. You probably time. got dropped a lot as a child. Man, like I said, this head done wore out three bodies already. But um, when it came down to... First time I saw that thing, I knew it was going to give you problems. Yes, man. There's problems written on. Have you seen my mug shot? <laughs> have, uh, anyhow, so the... Um, I have it framed on my mantle. It's my, it's my startup screen on Windows. So the, uh, the the black and white, and whether you like hot rods or muscle cars, do you see them coming back around? Because I don't give a flying crap what anyone says. There is a friend of mine sitting to my right that call, called the OBS truck phase fad current market three years ago. And, said, and you walked around one here and said, if you aren't looking to buy an OBS truck right now, you are missing it. And I mean, I have an OBS truck now and we can't, you can't buy one for less than, I mean, I saw you buy an OBS truck with a mouthful of macaroni at the rod run on the you, phone. You got to make that move. And uh, that was, uh, you can't let chewing was, get in the way. Yeah, that was a full a phone call. Hold on. No. Everybody here. And I, he looks at Matt, Kobe, myself, everybody finish what we got. There's a truck that I've got to go buy right now. And we left a restaurant to buy. An OBS. We got a to-go box. But so the OBS truck Check, please. Came, yeah, came back in and you saw it uh, three, three or four years ahead of time. But do you see the hot rod phase? Because now we're in muscle car land mm -hmm. and everything that runs across the line at, at Mecham or at, uh, at Barrett Jackson, which I had my, my, my Barrett Jackson story a long time ago. And I went there and sold one there. But, uh, do you see the hot rod market? Craig, appreciate you. He's, man, I probably bought that man at least a set of tires. But do you see the hot rods coming back? I mean, no one thought that mom jeans were going to come back in style. The thing you got to understand, fashion and automotive, decor, everything works in circles. Sure. Everything does. So everything old is new again. You know, like, just like you're starting to see mom jeans and flare leg jeans getting big again and all that stuff. I wore that shit. I wore about anywhere mom jeans in high school, but I wore flare leg jeans in high school. But maybe once, okay? It was one terrible class picture. <laughs> but, but you know, I think that there's going to be an interest because you get two sides of this. You get some guys that are coming at you saying, oh, man, you know, all those old timers are dying off. I don't think those cars are going to die off because – I think somebody needs to make them cool again. Sure. I mean, I'm just like, I'll give you a perfect example. And it just takes like one movie or one hero car or whatever. Right. It, you, okay. Well, yeah, think about it. Take Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Cobra. Uh, that, and Corey Eubanks was a stuntman on that show. He's the one that jumped it out of the second floor of the parking garage. And then he jumped it generally for me. Right. His dad is Bob Eubanks. Yeah. So if you, you've not. You know, Sylvester Stallone, mm -hmm. the damn I've talked or the uh, game show host. Yeah. This is Bob Eubanks. Yeah, and his son's Corey Eubanks. He was a stuntman on the Dukes of Hazard. Useless information. Useless, but he's so about, useful. He's talking about the movie Cobra by St Sylvester Stallone. We're going back to that because we just did American 3D. If you have no idea what we're talking about, there's got to be a phone nearby. But anyway, that 50 Merc. Yeah. There's people that have never seen a 50 Mercury before in their life. Saw that. Cobra's got one. And, and Sly's it got it. I need it. Yep. And I think that if something happened, God forbid, the last Fast and Furious, if they're riding around in 40 Fords 
or 32 Fords or something like that. I'm telling you, be, that's there's going to be something to spur that interest. And those cars are out there and they're sitting in garages and they're around. And I see it. I really do. I don't know. Maybe it's because I grew up around them and I, and I love them. I really see them coming back. I really do. Yeah. And that's why I lean on you on some of this stuff because – Granted, I mean, I live in Indianapolis, and, and, and we are, you know, not too far from where we're sitting today, but there is, there's, you know, oh my God, California's got these trends, this got these trends, and of course, you know, we saw the goofy trucks in Pigeon Forge that we don't have any of those in Indiana. We don't have, I mean... The squat, Carolina squat hadn't made it up there yet. I'll tell you what, there's, 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 uh, there's two signs that you have COVID, and one is loss of smell. And the other one is you can't taste anything. And everybody has tasteless trucks in the Carolinas because they're all suffering. From Speak COVID easy. I like my, my Silverado sits level. And I had to, I have a, a newer Dodge and I had to put a, a, a leveling kit on the back of it. Cause I, every time I walked out, I'm like, Oh, that's the dumbest looking damn truck I've ever seen in my life. But, uh, not because it was a Dodge. Yeah. And, uh, but all these fads and things that come back, you have a little bit better grasp on it than I do. Even though, you know, I mean, I've, I've got crazy Australian cars and, a, and the world's most expensive Lumina. But, I mean, it's just, uh, when I saw you call the OBS truck and I, you know, it's like Babe Ruth calling the shot. I was like, how the hell does, I mean, these are stupid ass Chevy trucks. And you're looking dead at the camera and said, if you see them rustish free and you didn't pick it up for $700, you call me and I'll give you 17 for it now. So, Well, and that's the thing. You know, they were extremely popular when they first came out. Sure. I mean, sport truck lived on OBS Chevrolet oh trucks. God. That whole community yeah. did. Yeah. And and it, it kind of went cold. It was the old truck, and then the LS stuff comes out, and the new sure. stuff. <clears throat> but the the thing is, is it's the new classic. Yeah. So now you can put clutter car insurance on them. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they're easy to fix. You know, yeah. I mean, lowering kits, wheels. And you got a neat ride yeah. that you can take to car shows, cruises, and still drive it every day. And I think that's another big thing that's going to be a big selling point with the street rod craze. Yeah, if you had an original 32 Ford, that's a glorified go-kart. All day. 85 horsepower flathead. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything with a Model sure. A. You can't do anything like that. But a street rotted Model A that's got a small block Chevrolet, vintage air, power windows, power door locks, four-wheel disc brakes, same idea. Mm-hmm. You've got all those creature comforts, vintage look. Sure. And that's, I mean, I, this would be two videos that we're talking about retro style and retro vintage stuff. But, I mean, there is a grasp on it. There. And for me, too, like I said, and I don't mean to beat this story to death, hot rods and, and me, it was always black and white. It was either muscle cars or hot rods. And I was muscle car, but... Uh, I yeah. like them all. Yeah, you like them all. All right. Uh, man, these uh, we're having a big time. Robert, are you having a good time? I'm tickled. So, uh, going back to AMA and Ask Rob Anything, because uh, it's been a little bit, um, if you had to start over, all over, from the beginning, go back to the trailer park and uh, go down the dirt road and, and start all over, and it wasn't cars, would you get back into collector used cars? Would you truck truck life? Would you? Is there anything? I mean, I know you're having the time of your life, and I know you're well, and and I mean, but uh, do you see any anyone in a different career or anything going? Damn. Would you have, would you, I mean, I can't. I well, there's several things I'd have done different, but. Sure, I mean, but I'm, okay, so there's one. That's first, we're stopping that story to start this one. Um, so, so plenty of things to do different, but would you have done a different career? Is there anything else that was like, because I don't see it. I can't I see can't, it. I can't even think. I mean, I, I almost believe I could believe, I could see myself living without breathing than living without being in the car business of some type. Yeah. I mean, because I, I grew up in it. Sure. And I, I, like I've told people this before, my uncles, my yeah. grandfather, yeah. my dad, every man and some women in my family, you know, I've got great aunts that worked for General Motors on the, at the plants and sure. things like that, that built cars. I don't know no other way. I mean, that, I mean, it was just, I mean, thank God I liked them because. Here you are. Yeah. yeah so and- I, I really don't, I can't, I can't imagine Going a different direction, and that's what I said when I was. I don't like I said. I know, I'm not jealous of, of you, even though uh, you grew up with some pretty cool some bitches in your family. Oh yeah, but but I mean that's but, that was the thing. Like, how about if I came out like, and I mean, I want to be a football player, or I want yeah. to be a yeah. chemist. 
you or, know, or a disc jockey. Or a disc oh, jockey. Wait a minute, we did. Do yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Right. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But that's that's the thing. Like I just I've been around. I don't know no other way. I, I mean, can't it's, see. I can't see Rob Pitts being a landscaper or a whatever else. Yeah, you don't want me telling you about your box woods out front. Or your box, for that matter. So anyhow, uh, thank Trim you. Trim your shrubs. Shrubs. All right, we got more. Oh. And somebody made this two-sided. This is beyond. Uh, Kobe Kai. Yeah. He got the predator work. It's Kobe always Kai, fun. I don't care. And Rob, Rob throws him under the bus because he loves him. He saved my whole ass yesterday on this thing. And... Uh, if you ever meet some Kobe Kai's, he's uh, one of the uh, he's a the key. first thing to ask him is about wrestling alligators. Yeah, and one person that has done everything, Kobe Kai. Kobe Kai's wrestled alligator. He's probably jumped out of more useless or perfectly good airplanes. Yeah, he's got while wrestling the alligator yeah. straight to the ground and can play volleyball. And explain that to me. Yeah. So, uh, moving on. Moving on. Um, our boy Rob. Yeah. Big, full but full last name. Uh, when are we going to get some more Rob, uh, some podcasts? Uh, because his episode list is running low. We are, we were working on it. We got some other projects lined up. Um, like I said, I'm taking a 16 week hiatus from here, working which, on another big project. Um, which I'm, see uh, soon. and that's we're helping get some stuff, stuff in get yeah. some content and so in if on you that. say man travis is still bald i will be still bald in 16 weeks but yeah it's uh, but yeah so uh i know you're working on do you have any time at all in your schedule i mean I, to to dump some podcasts in or we it's just, hard and, and and we really want to i'll be honest we we've got a podcast room that we're building in there mm -hmm. that that's the complete setup i mean hell we got a better setup than most radio stations but or going in that's better than most radio stations it's just the time sure i mean you got to think you know, we sold 116 cars out of this building last year alone. And then, you know, running a diesel truck shop, doing YouTube videos. I mean, just things like that. It's just hard to do. It really is to do it all. How many cars are you up to this year? Do you know? Uh, 87 as of yesterday. With months to go. And then. Which I might want to take a little break. So it's going to sure. knock a little out. Which is fine. So, yeah. So possibly it's just uh, there's not more than 24 hours in the day. So, man, there's just so much. You can and do. I'll tell you something else I've learned. I've done more thinking in the last five months since my father passed. Sure. And I want to tell you something. You know, my grandfather lived to be 61. My dad lived to be 62. And, you know, it gets you thinking about That's things, true. especially when you're 42. And um, with and considering smoking is probably one of the safer bad habits I have. You know, I mean, you that's... You have bad habits? I know. It's crazy, right? Okay. But it gets you thinking... And, you know, I was that kind of guy. And you can ask Matt, you can ask Kobe, anybody. I mean, I was up 14 hours yesterday going nonstop. I have also learned to take a break. You know, I'll call them guys up and say, listen, guys, I'm going out of town. Or, hey, we'll chill out this weekend. Yo, yo, you know what I'm saying? Well, and that's stopping your story to start another one. I, you and I, when we talk on the phone, everybody's like, oh, you're the car guys. You do this, you do that. And you're the idiot that, that DJ played Dancing Queen more than... Abba did, and, and Rob Pitts has that golden voice because of uh, why? Marble lights, right? Yeah, not lights. <laughs> Cowboy killers. I look a girl to you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Virginia Slims. <laughs> but so, but we will talk about things from weight loss journey and, and how, because I mean, uh, you know, I am wearing a 3XLT shirt, and Rob is just a single fat, and I'm three times that. But so we'll talk about, you know, just, I mean, stuff that has nothing to do with cars. Right. And, well, we talk about life. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, and that's and true. That's, so when your old man passed away and you're like, oh, man, let's, let's, uh, it's maybe time to put my head on a little straighter. It's, you're not going to change, but you have to have an outlook on. You, you got to be able to enjoy it a little bit. Sure. And, and that's the thing. You get so wrapped up in the end game sure. that you miss everything along the way. And I mean, you got to think about it. this has been a whirlwind. On so many levels. Well, and when you were shooting originally, Kobe, this was on studs, and Kobe's back yeah. here. Banging well, the on very the... first video we shot, there wasn't even a stud up in here. This yeah. is an empty building. So this journey of rabbits used. And cars. then we shot at the truck shop for a while after that, or before that. Yeah. But it is so neat watching these videos. But even before that, even the Vin Wiki thing and the radio show thing, sure. I didn't go out seeking any of this. This is just kind of where I landed, 
And I love it. I mean, and it's and it's going into even more big things. But it's like it seemed like it was just yesterday. Well, true, and, and it, that, you know, and people go Indiana and Vin Wiggy, and now you're you're there hanging out. I mean, I, these are just my friends, and we just end up. And, and we don't. I'd be like, oh, Travis, you got to start your own channel. Dude, I know what Matt Begley goes through to edit this thing. Well, and that's the thing about and the it's, podcast. It's not just talking. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to figure out a little secret. We're not a polished act. Not a bit. <laughs> We've got all kinds of more questions to come, and we will uh, spread this out a little bit because there are a ton of questions. We Rob promised for the last four months that we'd get to these. So uh, I guess we might as well tell him we'll see you next time, and we'll start another one. Guys, we'll catch you next time here at Rabbit's Used Cars.